Hey y'all, how y'all doing? This is your girl Tashi and I am back with another video. How you doing? Hope you're doing great. Um, so this one is Drake's mansion is both amazing and awful at the same time. How is it someone's mansion amazing and awful at the same time? I don't know. I don't get that. But uh, let's just see the video. <laughs> Drake's mansion is so unbelievable that some of its features can only be described as awful. Every bathroom in this house, when you walk up to the toilet, it opens and starts playing Tupac hit him. <laughs> Made funnier by the insane legal battle Drake went through just to have it built. The brick wall is an eyesore to my clients in the neighborhood. He first purchased the property for $6.7 in September 2015, at which point it simply looks like this. A what? 1963 bungalow with a three-car garage and swimming pool, although it was obvious that Drake was focused on on a different part of the property. He never cared about like buying a big house. He was just like, I care about buying land. Drake bought the house for its land and location, being a two acre lot amongst other mansions in the Toronto neighborhood of Bridal Path. The suburb ranked as the richest area in all of Canada, with its residents having an average net worth of 22 million and an average home value of 5.1 million. YouTube videos driving through the area show some of the craziest houses you might ever witness. And as a result, it's no surprise that- A person can dream. A person can dream. My God. Drake decided to build there. On the 18th of May 2016, Drake's barely decipherable three-story mansion plans were first released to the public, which accompanied a planning notice at the front of the residence, leading to annoying petty problems before construction had even started. Drake quickly discovered that the house he'd bought to demolish had been designed by a world-famous architect, and as a result, he'd be scolded by the media for wrecking a piece of history. In one article titled, Drake, Take One Dance With That Bridal Path Home Before Tearing It Down, the writer stated, I'm pretty angry with you for considering it a teardown, while the demolition notice had comments such as, maybe a minor variance in zoning, but one more sad step in Toronto's blind disinterest in heritage. Although, Okay, I get it, but it's his, it's his money, it's his house. I mean, he could pretty much do what he want to do. I mean, that's how it is. I mean, the person who built the house before, you don't know what was there before. They probably destroyed something before they built that house. So, I get it. Sometimes people want to keep history. You know, I get it, but it is what it is. You know, like I said, it's his money. Who's going to stop him, you know? So these complaints were nothing compared to the issues caused by the new design, as the proposed mansion was so freaking huge it goes beyond what's permitted there. For example, the mansion's height of 17 meters was well beyond the 11 meters permitted by council, while his 34 meter wide driveway was three and a half times larger than the allowed width of nine meters. But the aspect that received the most backlash was the height of Drake's new fences. Fences more than twice as high as would otherwise be allowed in part due to security concerns on his property. Everyone knows where he sleeps, where he eats, and, and that has really freaked him out. As mentioned, Drake's extra high fences were proposed for security. However, his neighbors may- I don't, I mean, I understand the neighbors feel some type of way because he has these high uh, fences, but like I said, it's his house and he wants to feel comfortable. I don't blame him. If I was rich and I had money, I would probably do the same thing too. I want to have high um, fences in my house. I want my own privacy. So I don't, I don't know. People are going to complain anyway. So I, but I get it, though. Trust me, I get it. You know, you've been living there for how long? And then someone come and put this big fence there and make you feel some type of way. But made an money. effort to push back immediately. The brick wall is an eyesore to my clients in the neighborhood, as it could be observed from every, almost every single room of my client's residence. Despite this, councillors sided with Drake after learning he'd spent $1 million on trees for the property, and as a result, the building was finally approved. Roughly two months later, Drake's builder and architect, Ferris Rafoli, posted this image to his Instagram with the title, Let's Get Started. This was followed by another post only eight days later, showing that the block had been completely flat in the process creating a brand new problem. Drake's lovely neighbors had launched another complaint against him, claiming that trees were being cut down on the property before they'd received permission to do so. As a result, Drake was now facing a fine of up to $100,000 for every tree destroyed, although his builder maintained that they'd done nothing wrong. This was confirmed after a council investigation, which stated there have been no violations. There have been no large trees cut down. I'm very glad that Drake and the company he has hired is obeying the 
law. Roughly one month later, an archive satellite view of the property showed that construction was back underway, which accompanied a new post on Ferris's Instagram hinting at just how crazy the mansion was going to be. This is how we build an official NBA indoor basketball court, shoring an excavation in process, which was followed by another post one month later, showing the speed at which the house was being built. In the process, Drake came by to check out the property, which had begun framing only four months later, a stage which was fully completed within wow. a matter of weeks, at which point the builder revealed another crazy detail. While the original plans put the mansion at 21,000 square feet, this number had since been doubled to 45,000 square feet, which included a 3,200 square foot master bedroom suite. For context, the size of an average three bedroom home is usually around 1,600 square feet, meaning Drake's bedroom was going to be the same size as two fully built middle class homes. Although Drake showed... So my my apartment is is like a closet to him then <laughs> that's crazy if jake ever come in my apartment he'd be like so is this your closet <laughs> So no remorse for his extravagance stating because I was building it in my hometown I wanted the structure to stand firm for a hundred years I wanted it to have a monumental scale and feel it'll be one of the things I leave behind so it had to be timeless and strong I don't blame him I mean he has a son I'm not sure if he wants more kids but I get it what he's saying you know he want to make sure this house lasts until like 100 years from now he wants to make sure it's passed on to his son his son kids the next generation the next generation the next generation whoever so I, I get, you know, you got to take your time on this, you know, make sure everything is built strong. It's overwhelming high luxury. That message is delivered through the size of the rooms. I wanted to make sure people can see the work I put in over the years, reflected from every vantage point. As construction continued, Ferris and Drake once again posed at the front of the property. Although this, in combination with countless media articles listing his address, accentuated an aspect that was already a massive problem. Security. Well, the attempts of getting into this property is daily and nightly. As mentioned by Drake's representative, the house was being broken into every single single day and night, only made worse when the house was given a geotag as Drake's mansion on Google Maps. As a result, Drake had to hire significant security. Dude, his security is insane. Wow. You ever seen security? Uh, yeah, I've seen, seen some. Imagine more. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. You're not getting to this guy. No chance. With this also being seen in a video by a YouTuber named Walking Lady. Don't go on the property again, alright? Don't go what, sorry? On the property. And echoed in this comment reading, I drove past his house looking to take some pictures, but there were these three to four big dudes standing out front guarding the place. What a life. In one notable in- I mean, what do you mean? What, I mean, yeah, it's, it's his money. And it doesn't matter if he's rich or it doesn't matter his status. It can, he could be rich, poor. It doesn't matter. You have no right to go into anyone's property. So, you know, some of us are not fortunate to have security guards like that. But, you know, he has every right to make sure his property is safe. You know, it, it's just sad that people feel like they they could just come to his house and do whatever they want to do. Like, no, go somewhere. Incident, Drake's Toronto mansion was stormed by a knife-wielding woman who allegedly struck a security guard with a pipe, but while there were obviously some security hurdles during construction, there was no denying the house began to look incredible. Ooh. After laying the slab for the basketball court, Ferris uploaded a video showing the court's entire construction process, which included a Drake-themed scoreboard, Drake-themed on-court branding, and even Drake-themed basketballs. The video received comments such as, This is the dopest indoor court I have ever... I, yeah, it is dope. I've seen videos, uh, Drake, um, have, you know, there was videos of Drake having, um, you know, had his son, they was both playing basketball and that was the same court. So, wow, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I give it to him. Ever seen a celebrity have? Beats Shaq's and Jordan's, but while the basketball court could only be described as awesome, Ooh. there were other aspects of the property that were better described as awesomely stupid. For example, Drake spent $700,000 on the world's most expensive bed. Created specifically for Drake's house, the bed named Grand Vivitas weighs 530 kilograms or 1,168 pounds and took over 600 hours just to make a single one. The bed has a whiskey and champagne bar on the backside drake now everybody know who most majority i know who drake is but my gosh the money he have that he could just spend 700k on only a bed 
My bed don't even cost nowhere near that. <laughs> my bed don't even cost nowhere near that. My bed is chump changed to him. This is crazy. They said it, it, his house is amazing and awful. I'm still waiting for the awful. Because I don't, I don't, it don't look awful to me. Not, I will, I don't know if I will spend that much money on a, on a mattress alone, but that mattress better feel like heaven. That is crazy. Of the bed head and a dedicated team of employees who flip and clean the mattress every three months. In addition to the bed, Drake had a 4,000 pound bathtub delivered to his ensuite, which. What in the. That is beautiful. How much did he spend on that? It was made from one giant piece of marble at a cost of over $50,000. After finishing in the tub, Drake can get dressed in his two-story walk-in closet, which he since- Two-story walk-in closet, people. Some of y'all might say, you know, he's being silly with his money, but uh, that's investment. So can you imagine someone who wants to buy this house? Ooh. defended as being an important part of the property. The bedroom is where I come to decompress from the world at the end of the night and where I open my eyes to seize the day. The bed lets you float, the shower lets you escape and gather your thoughts, and the closet makes you want to talk to yourself while getting dressed. On the 5th of October 2019, roughly three years after construction first began, Drake posted this video to his Instagram showing that the luxury mansion was nearing completion while providing a further sneak peek into some of its wild features. There were the singing toilets we mentioned earlier as well as quite possibly the craziest indoor swimming pool you might ever witness however it wouldn't be until drake moved into the home six months later that he'd also show off his separate outdoor pool as apparently the property needed two separate pools on top of this drake bought a custom bosendorfer piano for an estimated five hundred thousand dollars which was shown for the first time in the 2c slide music video where drake would also display a room holding every award he'd ever won additionally drake built an entire hallway for the sole purpose of displaying basketball jerseys and considering Drake also has sun tanning beds in his bathrooms it's no surprise that even DJ Khaled praised the designer by stating amazing job I want you to build my next estate I've been thinking the name of the one we're gonna build together because embassy is incredible champagne poppy inspired me on another level I have more work to do although even if you that is crazy oh my gosh include Drake's 12 car garage and 10 million dollar car collection the mansion's often quoted value of 150 million is way over exaggerated the most expensive home ever listed in bridal path was on the other side of Drake Street which had an asking price of 45 million in 2021 the home was built at the same time as Drake's and has a similar nine bedrooms 16 bathrooms 12 car garage and an indoor swimming pool the property failed to sell for 45 million and has since had its price dropped to 40 million so while Drake's house is certainly more luxurious, it probably wouldn't sell for 150 million or even half of that. Despite wow. this, Drake has certainly achieved his goal of building a monumental property, albeit at the cost of his time, money, and even his safety. So, because I don't know if he has other people living with him, but I feel lonely in such a big house like that. Can you? I remember on when um who it was? It was 50 Cent. 50 Cent had bought a house from Mike Tyson. I think the mansion had about 15 bedrooms or 23 bedrooms. I'm, I don't remember. I think it was either 15 or 23. It was huge, okay? And he said he was like, it'll be him by himself in that house. And he couldn't take it because there was times where he, he'll hear noises or he just, I'm quite sure he really, what he really wanted to say was he felt very lonely in a, a big house like that. So he ended up selling his house. I don't know where he live at now, but I, I couldn't do it. I personally couldn't live in a house that big by myself. Okay. I'm quite sure he probably have some type of family member staying there, but it's still not enough to, um, fill, you know, fill that void in that house. If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I personally couldn't do it. But anyway, make sure you subscribe to my channel and I see lovely people. Take care. Bye and peace.